Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Intel Committee ends Trump Russia witch hunt, finds no evidence of collusion. It's official, as if we didn't know. The House Intel Committee has ended their Trump Russia collusion investigation. There was no collusion. From the Hill. The House Intelligence Committee is shutting down its contentious investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, the top Republican leading the probe announced on Monday. The committee will interview no more witnesses and Republicans are in the process of preparing their final report, Rep. Mike Conaway, Republican Texas, told reporters. A draft of that roughly 150-page report will be delivered to committee Democrats for review on Tuesday. The draft document asserts that there is no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, the most politically charged question examined by the committee. New York Daily News has more. Rep. Adam Schiff, Democrat California, the ranking Democrat on the House committee, rapidly denounced his Republican colleagues for wrapping up the investigation, calling it a tragic milestone for this Congress. In the coming weeks and months, new information will continue to be exposed through enterprising journalism, indictments by the special counsel, or continued investigative work by committee Democrats and our counterparts in the Senate, Schiff said in a lengthy statement. And each time this new information becomes public, Republicans will be held accountable for abandoning a critical investigation of such vital national importance. The Democrats on the committee are expected to release a separate report with much different conclusions. Watch, Hillary slips down the stairs twice while bashing Trump and America in India. Hillary Clinton has proven time and again she wasn't healthy enough to be president. Everyone remembers the video of her fainting spell on September 11th right before the 2016 general election. While bashing President Trump and America overseas in India the other day, super healthy Hillary nearly slipped down a flight of stairs, twice. From Daily Caller Hillary Clinton reportedly tripped down a flight of stairs twice in India Monday, requiring the help of two aides to make it down, according to a video obtained by the American Mirror. Clinton is in the country to participate in the India Today conclave, where she claimed President Donald Trump only won the election because he got the support of people she famously called deplorables. Clinton was attempting to walk down a flight of stairs without a railing when she nearly went down, twice. More from Town Hall, on Clinton in India. During an event in Mumbai, India with Bollywood stars, Hillary Clinton was reportedly introduced as the woman who should have been the President of the United States of America and she told those gathered that America did not deserve President Trump. She was asked if America deserved Trump after the event's host remarked it's commonly said that countries deserve the governments they get. Well, I would have to say no. We did not deserve that, Clinton replied. Washington Times has more. His whole campaign, Make America Great Again was looking backwards, she told attendees at India Today, Conclave 2018. You know, you didn't like black people getting rights? You don't like women, you know, getting jobs? You don't want to, you know, see that Indian American succeeding more than you are? Whatever your problem is, I'm going to solve it. The remarks were posted online by the GOP War Room YouTube channel and blasted as dismissing America's heartland to a foreign audience. Wow! Breaking, Rex Tyson fired as Secretary of State, will be replaced by Breaking News Rex Tyson is no longer Secretary of State. He's out. Look who is in. From Wall Street Journal. Ads by Rev Content. Washington, President Donald Trump said Tuesday that Rex Tyson is out as Secretary of State, after months of speculation over his fate, 
and that Central Intelligence Agency Director Mike Pompeo would be nominated to lead the State Department. Mr. Trump said in a morning tweet that Gina Haspel, currently Deputy Director of the CIA, would succeed Mr. Pompeo as the spy agency's chief. Both nominations are subject to Senate confirmation. A former ExxonMobil Corporation chief executive who had never served in government before assuming the State Department job, Mr. Tyson has had public and private differences with Mr. Trump over key national security issues, including the 2015 Iran nuclear agreement, the administration's talks with North Korea, a dispute among Persian Gulf countries and the Paris Climate Accord. Fox News Insider has Trump's statement. I am proud to nominate the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, Mike Pompeo, to be our new Secretary of State. Mike graduated first in his class at West Point, served with distinction in the U.S. Army, and graduated with honors from Harvard Law School. He went on to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives with a proven record of working across the aisle. As director of the CIA, Mike has earned the praise of members in both parties by strengthening our intelligence gathering, modernizing our defensive and offensive capabilities, and building close ties with our friends and allies in the international intelligence community. I have gotten to know Mike very well over the past 14 months, and I am confident he is the right person for the job at this critical juncture. He will continue our program of restoring America's standing in the world, strengthening our alliances, confronting our adversaries, and seeking the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Continued. His experience in the military, Congress, and as leader of the CIA have prepared him well for his new role and I urge his swift confirmation. Gina Haspel, the deputy director of the CIA, will be nominated to replace Director Pompeo and she will be the CIA's first ever female director, a historic milestone. Mike and Gina have worked together for more than a year, and have developed a great mutual respect. Finally, I want to thank Rex Tyson for his service. A great deal has been accomplished over the last 14 months, and I wish him and his family well. Pompeo's Statement I am deeply grateful to President Trump for permitting me to serve as Director of the Central Intelligence Agency and for this opportunity to serve as Secretary of State. His leadership has made America safer and I look forward to representing him and the American people to the rest of the world to further America's prosperity. Serving alongside the great men and women of the CIA, the most dedicated and talented public servants I have encountered, has been one of the great honors of my life. I am proud of the work we have done on behalf of America and know that the agency will continue to thrive under the leadership of Jean Le Haspel. If confirmed, I look forward to guiding the world's finest diplomatic corps in formulating and executing the president's foreign policy. In my time as director of the Central Intelligence Agency, I have worked alongside many remarkable foreign service officers and Department of State leaders serving here in the United States and on the very edge of freedom. I know I will learn from them and, as President Trump set out in his State of the Union address, work hard to ensure that our nation will forever be safe and strong and proud and mighty and free. This is a monster. Stay tuned for more. Trump's $18 billion border wall could pay for itself by cutting welfare to illegal aliens. President Trump's proposed $18 billion wall along the U.S.-Mexico border could cover its own cost if the U.S. cuts off welfare to illegal aliens, a study revealed. A study from the Center for Immigration Studies found that the $18 billion price tag for the wall along the U.S. southern border could be covered if the U.S. curbed the importation of drugs, crime, and poverty, particularly among illegal aliens who tend to go on the federal government dole. The wall could pay for itself even if it only modestly reduced illegal crossings and drug smuggling, Stephen A. Camarota, director of research at the Center for Immigration Studies, told the New York Post. Federal data shows that illegal border crossings went down 89 percent in El Paso, Texas, over five years after the Bush administration commissioned a two-story corrugated metal fence to be built along the U.S.-Mexico border there. The Department of Homeland Security estimated that if a wall were not built, 
there would be 1.7 million illegal border crossings over the next decade. Camarota said that if a wall stopped 200,000 of those crossings, the country would benefit from fiscal savings from money usually spent on welfare and other benefits spent on illegal aliens crossing the border from Central America and Mexico. Several other studies have shown that a wall would be beneficial for taxpayers over the long term. Another CIS study from February revealed that a border wall could save taxpayers $64 billion over the next 10 years. The U.S. Census Bureau's latest survey of income and program participation shows that 62 percent of illegal immigrant-headed households are on the federal dole, more than double the rate for households headed by native-born Americans. And that includes households where one or more workers are present in the household. Their use of U.S. welfare is highest for food stamps and Medicaid, data show. Though welfare use among illegal immigrants is much more associated with children, childless illegal households still use some welfare programs at surprisingly high rates, Camarota pointed out.